Praise God, praise God. Come on. Welcome to the City of David Weekly Bible Study. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I need you. I need you every hour and every day. Tonight, tonight we are continuing our study in the first and John. And so if you find your way to first John chapter four, I believe God has a word for us. I'm excited. Came in here with expectation. Amen. Amen. God has a word for us. Amen. So on tonight we want to continue our study. First uh, John, and get to chapter four, and let's see what God has for us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let us pray. God, we say thank you. Amen. We give you glory and honor and praise for another week's journey. Another day's journey. Excited about it, God. Here to say that your grace is proven to be sufficient in our lives. That's right, God, God, that you would send us the Holy Spirit. And we might study your word on tonight and, and, and reveal yourself to us one more time. Manifest yourself to us one more time. And we might leave here determined. To love you more dearly and follow you more clearly. We love you, adore you, magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. So tonight we are in First John chapter 4. And if I was pinning a topic or a title on tonight, it would be where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Amen. Praise God. Now, last week we talked about how First John four has much similarity with Paul's epistle, First uh, Corinthians thirteen. And we talked about First Corinthians thirteen. Some of y'all could get there. We talked about how we hear that passage many times, beginning at verse four, as it relates to love. Right? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love, it says, never fails. Right? Talked about that on last week, right? And then we talked about in verse 8 of our passage, 1 John 4 and 8, we declared or we read last week that God is what? Love. Right? And so now when you look at that passage that Paul wrote, it, it should read a little different to you. So you should say, God is patient. That's the shout. God is calm. That's the shout. God does not envy. Does not boast. Is not proud. Does not dishonor others. Is not self-seeking. Is not easily angry. That's the shout. It keeps no records of wrong. That's the shout. Does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. That's the shout. Always trust, that's a shout. Always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. God never fails. As we can give the benediction, go home for that right there. God never fails. So we get to our text tonight. I want to pick up at verse 7. We read that on last week, but I believe we can continue from there. That's a good place to continue from. So let's get ourselves to 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 7, and let's begin right there. Now what we're saying is this, uh, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes where? From God. Amen? Amen. Everyone who loves have been born, what? Of God. of God and knows God. 
God, right? Amen. Everyone who has been born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love does not know God because what? God is love, right? Now, it's a striking contrast that we are commanded to love one another because God loved us. Because we are loved by God and have received that love and live in light of it then we love others. Right? It says, let us love one another, for love is of God. Earlier in 1 John, he talks in specifics about the qualities of love. Right? Now, if love is of God, then those who claim to be born of God and claim to what? Know God must be able to love one another in the body of Christ. If you claim to be to know God and you claim to be born of God then you must be able to love one another in the body of Christ That's right. because you claim to know God you claim to know that God is love and you claim to have his spirit within you and if his spirit is within you then you ought to have the ability to love those he has created right turn your Bibles with me to 1 John 2 Let's get to verse 9. I want you to hear this passage. 1 John 2, 9, 11. Anyone who claims to live in God's light and hates a brother or a sister is still in the dark. It's the person who loves brother and sisters who dwells in God's light and doesn't block the light from others. But whoever hates is still in the dark stumbles around in the dark, doesn't know what which end is up, blinded by the darkness. You all shout about the verse that says that your word may be a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path, right? That means you, you, you're claiming to be led by his light. He's writing in 1 John 2 to say if you can't love, then you're not walking in that light, you're still in darkness. And if you're still in darkness, that means you're not allowing the word to order your steps and to lead you. Yeah. You're following a word, but not the word. Yeah. Right. And not the word means you're not following what? God. Because in the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God, right? And so if you can't find yourself loving brothers and sisters, then you are in the darkness. And it doesn't. And you can be in the darkness and still be a viable uh, attendee at church. You still can be in the darkness and be a member of somebody's choir. Somebody's worship board can even be pastor in the church. And you can't love others. So it's not whether or not you have uh, the ability. If you are born and believe, you're a believer, it's whether or not you have the desirability. How many of you all know that to love somebody is a choice? Amen. You, you, to love somebody is a choice. I can prove it to you. Because if God is love, then that means you've got to try to develop a relationship with God in order to know what love is. That means you've got to do something. You can't claim to love something or love somebody and you don't do nothing. Right? You've got to do something. So it's a choice. It's making a conscious Choice to love, right? Now the text says, watch this. The text says, watch this in First uh, John three ten. We, we, we're studying the night ten. Now let's start at verse eleven. First John three eleven. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Cain was walking in the dark. His brother was walking in the light. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. You got haters, don't be surprised what the text is saying. We know that we have passed 
from death to life because we love each other. And anyone who does not love remains in what? Death. And anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. You don't have to pull the trigger, but if you hate on somebody, the text says you're a murderer. You see why I tell you you got to be careful how you put your mouth on other people? Right? You may not kill them with a gun or a knife, but you can kill people with your mouth. If you hate on me with your words, you're a murderer. I'm not saying it, the word of God is saying it. Now watch this, verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. And if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? How can the love of God be in you if you see others without and you don't even have peace? In order that you and I might know what love is. And Jesus became the atonement of our sins. He paid a price that you and I cannot pay. Amen? We wouldn't get on the cross for our own sins, let somebody else. But he got on the cross for your sins and my sins to demonstrate what love is. So if you're going to claim to be a Christian, that of Jesus, that of Christ, then it's in you to love somebody else. And because you know you have received the love that you didn't deserve, you ought to be willing to give that love to somebody else. No, let's go back. Because you received the love that you did not deserve, you ought to be willing to love those who have him in them. That's why church ought to be the last place we hate on one another. That's why a body of believers ought to be the last circle that's hating on one another because you know you received something from the begotten son and you're trying to love somebody else who have also received something from the begotten son. He, 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 he. That's your proof right there that Jesus is the incarnate of God. He begot his only son and he gave his only son for you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now the text says, watch this, text says, that we might live through him. Mm -hmm. We live through Jesus, y'all. Yeah. I don't know whether or not you know it or not, whether or not you admit, admit it. We live through Jesus. Yes. You don't live through yourself. You live through Jesus. That means if you live through Jesus, you want all of your experiences to be through that. Amen. Amen. You don't want to live outside of that. You want to live through that. Amen. Amen. Now it says we live through Jesus. Amen. And then it says this is love. Not that we love God, but that he what? Yeah. Loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. He sent his only son for your sins. That's the love he had. He wanted to be reconciled with us so he made that which could be the payment or the propitiation for us. Jesus was that for you. God is love. We, When we say that, we are not saying everything uh, about God. Right? When we say God is love, God is more than just love. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, talk back to me, right? Remember last week we went over what God is. Y'all remember we said life and truth. God is more than just love, right? And because God is more than just love, every attribute of God, amen, love is involved in. And that's your shout. Because when he disciplined, he disciplined with love. When he, oh, that's it right there. When he corrects, he corrects with love. When he gives out blessings, he gives out blessings with love. When he gives out justice, he gives out justice with love. When he gives out rebuke or correction, he gives out rebuke or correction with love. God is love, so everything God does, he does through the vessel of love. Love. He does through love. Okay, God is love. Everything God does in one way or another, it, it expresses love. And so if God is in you, everything you do, uh, love ought to be in it. If you do anything and love is not in it, then you're not moving in the spirit of God. And, and, and whereas 
uh, the, the, the baptism received from John uh, cleanse you of your sins. That's not enough as a believer. Right? Just because I wash you, uh, if, if, if a baby is dirty and we put the baby in the water mm -hmm. and, and we clean the baby, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a ring in the tub, right? There's going to be a ring in the tub, right? Yeah, right? But we clean that ring in the tub, right? right? And then we put into the baby what the baby needs in order to go from that moment and live a righteous life, right? Yeah. Getting clean from your sins is not enough. You can't say I'm clean of my sins and that's all. No, you got to be clean of your sins and then you got to move forward in love. You got to be cleansed of your sins and then you got to be willing to love your neighbor, love your sister, love your brother, love your assignment, love your purpose, love the will of God, love the way of God, love the word of God. You ought to be able to move because God has loved you first. He loved you first, right? Right. He loved you first, right? Now it says, uh, if you just only believe that God is love, and you don't believe God does everything with love, you're gonna miss what God is doing in your life. Amen. You're gonna miss what God because if you believe God is love, Amen, and you don't believe God is the other things. Then when God does the other things, you're going to expect everything in your life to be surrounding or involving love. Right? When he rebukes you, you got to understand you deserve worse than what he did for you. When he corrects you, you got to understand you deserve more than how he has corrected you. Right? How many of you all know the wages of sin is death? Amen? But the fact of the matter is you're still living here and you're still looking good because he corrected you with love. He demonstrated grace over your life with love. He demonstrated mercy over your life with love. And that's why you should take the praise team and sing your song when you know what God has done in your life and for your life. You ought to be willing to give God the glory because God has been merciful even when you did. God is love. God is love. Right? He's love. Uh, and then the text says, watch this. It says, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen? Amen. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Since God loved us, we ought to love, we know God, right? Early in the text, we said we know God, right? It said in verse 7, knows God. There's a Greek word called genosko, and genosko is knowledge with experience. Because you have experienced God, you ought to be willing to love others. I'm going to say that again. Because you have experienced God, you ought to be willing. If you have never experienced God, then it's okay for you not to love somebody else. But if you know you have experienced God, come on, let's have a check. Let's check the temperature in the room. If anybody know God has done more for you than you can do for yourself, anybody know God has worked some situations out for you that it was nobody but God. I'm not talking about nobody that's always been on easy street. I'm talking to a few people where you know your back was up against the wall and you called so and so and so and so didn't show up and now you're here to say you got out of it and you know if it had not been for God stepping into that situation, you would still have your back up against the wall. Am I talking to anybody that's been afflicted with something but yet God stepped into the midst and worked the situation out? Am I talking to anybody that know you've had some crooked road and God has straightened that thing? Am I talking to anybody that know you have to pray for a family member, pray for mama or daddy, pray for your child, pray for your grandchild, and you know God has, because you know God, you should be able to love somebody else, because you have an experience with God. You, know, you don't have just functional book knowledge. You got experience. You got experiential knowledge of how God will make a way out of no way. You have, I mean, you don't you don't come to church just shouting about what you read in the scripture, what you, what, you, what Big Mama shouting about you, because you know for yourself. You, you live life long enough for yourself to know if it had not been for God, where you would be and how. Because you know that, you ought to love somebody else. You ought to love 
So God, what he said in text is, if you have no experience of God, then the requirement to love is not on you. But, that's a contraction. But, but if you have experience, and, and, and let, me, let me just go there, right? Because y'all smart people. You've experienced God even before the foundation of this world. You, you experienced God when he showed love. You, he, you felt the love of God before you even knew God was love. You were still in your mother's womb when you felt the love of God. The foundation of the world wasn't even created when you felt the love of God. You just found out today God is love. All your life you've been experiencing the, the blessing and the love of God. And the text is watching. He said, dear friends, since God so loves us, we ought to love one another. If, if God loves you, you ought to be willing to love someone else. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, then God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. His love is made complete in us. His love, his love alone in us is not complete. His love in us alone is not just complete. His love in us becomes complete when we then go push that love outward to others. Amen? When we go push that love out to others, right? Now, it says right here in that text, it says, no one has ever seen God, but you claim to love him. You've never seen God, but, but, but you claim to love him. You claim to love something you've never seen, but you hate people you see every day. Let's go, let's go further. Let's go further. Let's go, let's go deep. You claim to love God who you've never seen, but you struggle with loving yourself. You struggle with loving your and you know how you struggle with loving yourself? It ain't just because you don't cut yourself. That don't mean you don't love yourself. When you don't get in your word, what will magnify God's light in your life, you don't love yourself. When you're not trying to develop a right and stronger relationship with God, you don't love yourself. Yeah. If the power in the world is in the Holy Spirit, then you need more of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you're not in the Word and you're not developing a relationship, a right relationship with God, a stronger relationship with God, then you don't really love yourself. And, and when you don't love yourself, then the requirement can't be for you to love somebody else. The reason people struggle with loving you because they don't love themselves. I can't pour out what I don't have. I wish I was talking for real. If I got nothing in my cup, I can't pour nothing in your cup. <laughs> but if I got something in my cup, then I can pour something in your cup. Watch this. And if you got something in your cup, and, and, and in your cup is love, you can give love out to other people because you understand that the source of the love that's in your cup comes from God. And because God have unlimited supply, that means when I light your candle, my candle still burn. When I pour into your heart what's in my heart, my heart's still full. When I give of you what I have to give, then God can give me more. See, the reason God can't do more in some of our lives is because we act like God has a scarcity. Well, if I light her candle, that's going to take away from mine. If I give to my brother, that's what the devil is a lot. God don't need to pull you down in order to elevate me up. God can pull you up and me up at the same time. And he can give us the glory at the same time. And he can magnify himself in us at the same time. Am I talking to anybody in here that know that God? No one has seen God, but, but, but if, if, but if we love one another, then God lives in us. So, so, so that's why I asked the question, well, where do you live? Do you live in love? Because if you live in love, we wouldn't have so much hate in the church. Hmm? If you live in love, now watch this, God is love, right? If you live in God, how can you live in God? Am I not? Through the word. Through the word. And all thy getting, get what? Get it not? Through the word. When you know what the word says about God, and you know what, how God nature is described in the world, then the love of God can magnify itself in you when you get closer to the word. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's why every day you ought to be reading some kind of word. Because yeah. every day you're getting closer to God. Yeah. Right? God and, and when you get closer to God, because of all those things we said last week God is, stuff start happening in your life. Yeah. Truth start coming in your life. Yeah. The light of God start coming in your life. 
justice, perseverance start coming in your life. Sometimes life will happen to all of us. Amen? And you're going to need that pole. Life will happen to all of us. But you got to get close to the word of God so that you can persevere through the word. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Text this. Let's watch this. Verse 13. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. He's given us of his spirit. He's given us of his spirit, but not all of us have received his spirit. All right. Come on. That's what we talked about. One baptism is not enough. Right. Then because you've been dipped in some water, that ain't enough. Right. You got to be developing a right relationship with God that he might send his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when you have this Holy Spirit, you have an indwelling inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's inside of you, then it illuminates who he is in his nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. His love inside of you begins to fill you up. Mm -hmm. And then out of that abundance, you can give to others. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But you need the Holy Spirit. You need to be in your word. You need to be developing a, a right relationship with him. You need to be getting closer to him. You need to be trying to uh, 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 see uh, what he's doing in your life and what he's doing in this season so that you can have the Holy Spirit moving and operate the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Right. What helps you become righteous is being in right relationship with God and having the Holy Spirit order and guide your steps. Yeah. Right? right? The text is this. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Now when it says, and we have seen, this is said to be those who walked in the day of Jesus. They saw him. Mm -hmm. they, not, they can testify. Mm -hmm. They can testify that they saw him. They saw him and he sent his Savior, he sent his, his Son to be the Savior of what? The world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, then God lives in them and they in God. If anyone acknowledges, do you acknowledge? Do you open up your mouth? See, see, acknowledge means you communicate. It's not enough to know that Jesus lived, he died, and he rose again. You got to be willing to communicate that. You got to be willing to open up your mouth. Just because you just sit there and that means nothing. You have to be able to open up your mouth, right? Because out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaks, right? It can't just be in your heart dormant because your faith has to be active. Your faith has to be active, right? And so because it's in your heart, you have to open up your mouth and acknowledge. We talked about this last, uh, two weeks ago. The enemy even knows that he exists. What makes us different from the enemy is that we open up our mouth and acknowledge his life, death, and resurrection. We acknowledge him as the Messiah. We acknowledge him as Lord. We acknowledge him as the King of Kings. We acknowledge him as Yahweh. We acknowledge him as the Savior. We acknowledge him as God. He, he, he says, if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, that God lives in them and they in God. Do you live in God? Yeah. Do, do you live in God? Yeah. More importantly, do, does God live in you? Yeah. Does, does God live in you? And, and watch this. If God lives in you, I'm going there tonight. If God lives in you, you just said it, you just shouted online, y'all probably shout, yeah, yeah, yeah. If God lives in you, that means you are the indwelling of God, right? You are the indwelling. Be careful when you say right. You are the indwelling of God, right? If God lives in you, why would you put anything contrary to God in you? All right, my goodness. Well, my goodness. Let that walk the room. If God lives in you, if God is in your house, why would you allow for anything ungodly to come in your house? Because, <laughs> Brent Jones, I hear you. Fear and faith can't live together. Right. Amen? Right. You know why fear and faith can't live together? Because fear is not of God. Y'all right. taught me that when y'all said God didn't give me the spirit of fear. Right. If God didn't give me the spirit of fear, then that means the world or the enemy gave me the spirit of fear. Well. And that means that's not of God. And if God is in me and that's faith, right, then fear can't be in me, right? 
Anything that is contrary to God, you ought not want inside of you. Sin can't dwell in this house. That's, all, that's what you ought to be saying. Sin can't dwell. Hatred can't dwell in this house. Some of us are just nasty just because it's nasty. We don't even have a reason to be nasty. We hate just, we, we, we frown at me. She better not look at me. They better not be sitting in my seat. They better, I ain't scooping over. They better sit behind me. And I'm, I'm 30 minutes late. Praise and worship is over. But nobody better not be in my seat. And they better have it warm up in there. I'm going to let them know about it. And they better not sing too long. And pastor better not preach too long either. And I'm going to let them know. It don't take all that. And it's too loud up in there. And I don't want to come over in there no more. Why we ain't over there in the old sanctuary? Why we in this little fellowship hall? I should have this whole row by myself. None of that is of God. None of that. And I guarantee you, I don't have no scientific. I guarantee you, you are expending more knowledge doing all that than just loving God and loving your name. All that frowning and all that, you you use less energy just smiling. Amen? Amen. Amen. But if God is in us, then love is in us. And because we have received the love, right, then we ought to be willing to give that out to those who have also, right? And watch this. You all say that uh, man was created in what? His image. He was created in his image. So the next time you can't love somebody, then you mean you can't love the image of God. You can't love the creation of God. Right? And, here, and here's another thing. Let's go there. Some of us love the creation more than we love the creator. Wow. Wow. Oh, Y'all don't want to talk back to me tonight. <laughs> Some of us love the creation more than we love the creator. Right. I know I can go there right now. I can preach that tonight. Right? You love your car more than you love the one that gave you the car. Right. You would drive the car on Sunday everywhere to go get car washed. And, and here's what you... You'll wake up at 7 in the morning to go to your favorite car wash, and they'll put you in a line, a two-hour line, right? And you'll sit there cold and shivering, waiting for them to armor all those tires and put stuff on the inside, right? But you won't come to the building where it's nice and warm at 9 o'clock to get in the glory. Yeah. 7 o'clock is too early for church, but 7 o'clock ain't too early for the car wash. A line around the corner is too long at Spagatini. But open freely to walk into God's temple, that's too much. You love the creation more than you love the creator. You love the creation of the money, but you don't love the one who gave you the money. You don't love the one who gave you the job. You don't love the one that gave you the family. You don't love the one that gave you the house. And if you love him because he has blessed you, then you ought to be willing to love somebody else. Amen? Amen? And so we would know and rely on the love God has for us. God, we, we rely on that. I rely, I don't know about y'all, but I rely on that love. I, I, I rely on that love. I lean on that love. I, 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 I don't know, y'all holy. I need the love of God in my life. I, I, I need him. When, when, when y'all hear me singing, I need thee, oh, I need, I need him. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't make it another second without my God. I, I can't make it another day. I need him. I, all the hell that's in my life, I need God. All the stuff I need God to work out and work through, I, I, I need God. I, I love y'all, but I need God. I mean, I need God. I need God like a deer in the, in the desert after water. I need God every day of my I rely on God. I rely, and because I know he's faithful, that's why I shout. Because I know nothing is too hard for him, that's why I shout. Because I know all he can do all things, that's why I give him the glory. Because I know he can work it out, that's why I praise his name. Because I know he can out of cattle on a thousand hills, that's why I can't stop dancing. Because I know the nature of God, and I rely on God, and I need God. 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 I need him, and I rely on God. Amen? Texas, God is love. Yep. Now, whoever lives in love lives in God. Where do you live? Mm. Do you live in love? Do you live and make it? And when your love, watch this, when your love matures, you know what maturity is, spiritual maturity is? That is a total reliance on the knowledge of God 
And when you activate the Holy Spirit to direct and order your steps, that's, that's, that's what spiritual maturity is. You don't walk into being a believer knowing how to love spiritually perfected. I'm going to say that again. You don't walk in the church knowing how to love spiritually perfected. Right? You got to mature when you come into Christ. Right? Because if you're not mature when you come into Christ, it's going to be hard for you to love your enemies. Ooh, it's going to be hard for you to love people you know spitefully using them. It's going to be hard for you to love people who you know dragging your name in the mud. Amen. And you got to, that's not something you get, that's not something you attain and then you got to stop doing the work. You, you, you got to keep, <laughs> that is very important. You got to keep praying daily and keep developing. If you come in and get to this level, you can't stay at this level. You got to go to this level. And you got to go to this level. And you got to go to this level because the challenges at this level, it's going to magnify when you get to this level. Amen? Amen. People just cut you off in the street, but people in the church are cut you, period. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> Amen? And you got to love them. And, 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 and here's, what you, here's where you got to let that love mature because on Sunday, folk that's in the world that do crazy stuff, they got to go somewhere on Sunday. Uh, 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 uh. They got to go somewhere on Sunday. And you gotta have a because if you don't if you don't develop and grow your love to a mature state, the first time they do something crazy to you, you gonna leave church. Because in your immaturity, you gonna say the church can't have it. Can't be no heathens in the church. They can't cut you in the church. They can't steal from you in the church. But you can leave your pocketbook open in the church. Ain't no thieves in the church. And then you come in here and they steal from you. You gonna say, Oh Lord, have mercy. I came to church and they robbed me. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you got to have the love, the maturity. Maturity and let you know the same people out there, the same people in here. The same devil out there, the same devil in here. Right? And when you mature in your faith, you come in here not just praying for you, but you have a love for your neighbor to pray for your neighbor. Some of my prayers ain't even for me. My prayers are for some of y'all. That you stay housed up in the spirit That the enemy can't find no place To dwell inside of you yeah, yeah, Amen Because yeah. if we all prayed up And we all operate in the spirit of love Y'all know how wonderful that would be yeah. Y'all know how great that would be And we get some of that at the city yeah. We get more of that at the city yeah. And that's why people can come here and say I felt something People can come in here and say It felt like something I never felt before Or I haven't felt in a long time That's because more of us are moving In the spirit of the love of Christ yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen Amen And we're chasing the enemy out of you yes. Amen yes. The text says this And God in them Verse 17 this is how love is made complete amongst us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Yes. In this world, we are like Jesus. You like Jesus. Like. That's a metaphor. Like. Like means you have some characteristics. Mm -hmm. But you're not Jesus. Some of y'all need to understand that. You, I know you've been in church 30 years. You're not Jesus. I know you cook the best fried chicken, baby. You ain't Jesus. I know can't nobody make church fun like your church fun. You ain't Jesus. Amen. You like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you like him in his image. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you like him in the sense that if you have developed a relationship with him, then his third nature, the Holy Spirit, is inside of you. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Everybody in the church don't have the Holy Spirit. Can I put a memo out there? Everybody in the church ain't walking in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody not walking. Just because you saw them get baptized don't mean nothing. Just because they raise their hand when pastor, pastor open up the doors of the church don't mean nothing. You got to, from that moment, continue to develop a right relationship with God. You got to put one brick one day on top of another day. You got to begin to say, say, Lord, give me my daily bread. And you got to say that daily. This day on top, and some days it's going to be worse than other days, but you got to get back up the next day and add another day, 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 and soon you're going to be able to say, I'm walking in the Holy Spirit. I'm walking, I'm not perfect, but I'm a long way from where I used to be, baby, and you ought to be giving God the glory that I'm so far from where I'm going. He says, he says, 
there is no fear in love. Because if God is love, and if the spirit of God manifests his love, fear can't be in love. Because fear is a spirit, I just told you, that's contrary to God. There can be no fear in love. Come on, can I talk back to that? There, there can be no fear in love. You, you, you can't make a decision to love somebody and be scared about that decision. Can I talk to some real people tonight? Yeah. Right? That means when you decide to love somebody, don't make that decision with fear. Right. Just decide, I'm going to love that person. Yeah. And you can say, I'm going to love that person, even if you don't know how that person is going to treat you. Because of this. 1 Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. He always trusts and he always protects. Amen. That means when you're trying to do it in the spirit of God, amen, God's going to protect you. Amen. God's going to give you insight. Yeah. God's going to give you discernment. Yeah. And God, y'all really want to go there tonight. Mm -hmm. God's going to tell you the limits to go with your love with certain individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I wish I was talking to real people tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I was buddy. I wish I was talking to some real people. Yeah. God's going to, when you do it God's way, he's going to give you the limits with certain people. Yeah. He's going to let you know that's, that's an assignment, baby. Don't take that further than no assignment. <laughs> That's just an assignment right there. Don't, don't try to make that out of what it ain't. That's an assignment right there. That, 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 that's your brother in Christ. <laughs> that's, your, that's your sister in Christ. Don't take this further than what you know. Don't let the, don't let the eyes and the ear gates take this further. That, that's your, he's going to give you that. So you don't have to say, I can't, I don't know who to, no, just, just trust God. And you're going to get that discernment and you're going to get that wisdom by staying in his word. Yeah. Staying in his nature. Staying in your meditation. Yeah. He's going to begin to show you how to love different individuals. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He's going to add anybody you choose to love or you, you, you having questions about in the ways to love, you ought to be praying about it. Because yeah. yeah. God will give you the ways to love yeah. certain people. Yeah. 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 Amen? God, even, even your family, God will show you how to love them. Yes, Lord. Amen? Because yes. loving them don't mean they're always at your house. Yes. They're always on your phone. Yes. They're always in your pockets. They don't live a lot. God will show you how to love them. Yes. Amen? There's no fear in love. Amen? There's no fear, I'm going to say that again, in love. But be led by God. Don't be led by your own flesh. You're going to get your heart broke. You're going to get embarrassed out here in these streets if you let your flesh lead you in the way to love people. You better ask God, how can I love this individual? Amen? Amen? You're going to be on Judge Maybelline. <laughs> Amen? And in California, is a what? Mural, you got to, yeah, you got to split stuff. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen. Be led by God and God alone. Amen? Amen? It says in the text, watch this, it says, because fear has to do with punishment. Mm -hmm. Fear has to do with, God did not, uh, God does not require you and I to just keep laying down and making an atonement because in the New Testament, he hung on the cross for you and I. Right. right? And he didn't do that, uh, That was, it was fullness in that. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? And, in, and you got to understand and embrace it was fullness in him hanging on that cross. Because yeah. mm -hmm. if you don't embrace that, you're going to feel like you got to lay down on somebody else's altar in order to atone for something, right? Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't fullness in that, and then if you got to come and lay down, then that means that there must be some punishment or retribution in that. Mm -hmm. That's why the text says that there is no fear, there's no punishment in love. Mm -hmm. Amen? God did it for you because he loved you. Amen? And his love was complete. Amen? It didn't lack anything. The text says, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Amen? Uh, uh, we love why? Because he first loved us. I think that song we sing, I love you God because you first loved me. He first loved us. And look, he loved you even knowing what you would be. Yes, Lord. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. Even knowing what you would do. Uh -huh. He loved you. Yes. Thank right? You. you can't 
you can't celebrate the omniscient, that means the all-knowing God, right? And not be able to shout about yes, that. Lord. He loved you, right? Even knowing you were going to have some sin, and some He loved you. He loved you. He loved you. He loved you. Knowing you was going to have some time when you fell short of the glory. He loved you. He loved you. Right? Knowing the time when you were going to come up a little shit. He loved you. And that's what makes this. That's why when we say uh, we love in an agape way, you got to be careful. If anybody tells you they love in an agape way, you got to be careful. You got to be careful how you embrace that. Because agape way means there are no conditions and no boundaries. Right, right, right. That means there, there, there ain't nothing you can do that's right. going to make me take away my love from you. Right. Right. Amen? Right. You can still, I love you. Abuse, I love you. Do me wrong, I love you. Yeah. Right? Be careful when you say you love somebody in a, your love may be Eros. Right, right, right. You know, right. Luther Vandross and that. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You do right, I do right. You scrub it, I scrub it. I mean, that's right. right. But agape is something totally different. God's love, truth be told, is probably the only experience of agape we're going to experience on this side of heaven. That means there are, that's why you could say nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing. Come on, nothing. How, how many of you all know nothing means all nothing? You, you, can't create, you can't name something right now that's going to separate you from the love of God. That's a shot right there. That's a test right there. You can't name nothing that's going to separate you from the love of God. No sin is going to separate you from the love of God. Right? Nothing, no choice is going to separate you from the love of God. No mistake is going to separate you from the love of God. No setback is going to separate you from the love of God. No conflict is going to separate you from the love of God. No hater is going to separate you from the love of God. And if you know that there is power in nothing, you ought to be able to give God the glory for nothing. Nothing should separate you from the love of God. Now the text says, who, whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister is what? A liar. Is a liar. You, you, you claim to love God. You know what that claim is? That's, that, that's a shot, y'all. You claim to love God. You don't really love him. You claim to love him. It's self. It's self-diagnosed. I claim to love him. Right? It doesn't say anyone who knows they love God. It says who claims to love God. Yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen, you cannot love God whom they have not seen. He, he, nobody has seen God. No, nobody has seen God. Nobody. When you go all the way back to Exodus, Exodus, Moses, they had to, Elijah, they had to turn their face. No, because the Bible says if you saw God, then you would die. Yeah, no. Nobody has seen God. And, and when you read, and I, know, I know some will say in Exodus where they say uh, they saw God or whatever. They saw a, uh, they saw an image of God. They saw a, a symbol of God, but they have not seen God. Only His incarnate walked this earth in Jesus. People sing Jesus, nobody has seen God, right? right? I don't care how holy you are, how well you sing in the key G flat, you haven't seen God. Right. But if you claim to love God who you haven't seen, and you see your brother and your sister every day and hate them, then God ain't in you. Right. Right. And know this, brother and sister is, is relative. Mm -hmm. It's just like that passage where you say, uh, uh, who is thy neighbor? Right. Your brother and your, it ain't your blood brother and sister the word of God talking about. It's your brother and sister in the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Your brother and your sister who you can't uh, seem to forget or forgive as if God hasn't forgotten you or forgiven you. Tell it. Amen. Tell it. How many of you know you've fallen short of the glory? Oh, yeah. But yet God has forgiven you. Right? God, and you know what? That's why I'm that's why I'm as forgiving as I am now. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to lead from this microphone and this pulpit in a certain type of way for our church. Because mm -hmm. I know how much God has forgiven right. me. Right. And I know how much God has saw me through. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so anybody, if God did it for me, he can do it for them. Yeah. Right. Right? I wasn't always the preacher. Yes. 
Amen. 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 And because I know what God has done, right? I want to exhibit that kind of forgiveness to others. The text says, watch this. Cannot whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must. It didn't say can. It didn't say should. It didn't say ought. Come on, repeat that word, must. Must. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and their sister. Amen? Amen. 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 Must love their brother and their sister. Come on, y'all. Love is a choice. It's a choice. And God is love. That means love is a what? Is a noun. Right? But you express love through actions. Amen? You express love through actions. There is no fear in love. Right? When you make a conscious choice to love individuals, be led by God. Your prayers, God, show me how to love this individual. Amen? And be led by that. Don't follow your own heart. Don't follow your own ways because you're going to mess yourself up. And love with the knowledge, the experiential knowledge that God always trusts. God always protects. God never fails. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God the glory and the honor and praise. And so we are excited about this word on tonight, believing that God has a word for us. Go ahead right now. If you are uh, considering joining the city daily, if you would just type hashtag all in, uh, you can join our church on tonight uh, to join on uh, Sunday. And I believe you can join up our, our church on tonight. Just type hashtag all in and you can be the next member at the city of David. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Begin right now to type the names on the screen that you want us to uh, uh, pray for on tonight. The names of those you want us to lift up on tonight. We have so many, so many, so many on our prayer list. Amen. And we just believe that we can place all of this into God's hands and that he can continually do exceeding and above all we ever thought, dream, or uh, imagine. Amen. Amen. And so begin to just type the name on the screen and we will uh, continue to call out those names and uh, give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. 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 Praise God. And we're still, we're still lifting up the Walker family. We're still lifting up the uh, Neasha Crowley and family. Still lifting up Matthew T.D. Henderson and family. The Slater family. The Gray family. Still praying right now for the Stanley family. Praying right now for Annette Allen and Leon Campbell. Amen. Praying right now for the Posey family, the Robinson family, the Hall family. Praying for Sister Pat Lips. Amen. Praying right now for uh, First Lady Sheila Ware. Amen. Praying for Elder Marcus and Sister Daphne and Sister Michelle, Sister Deborah and Baby Cairo. Amen. Praying right now for Sister Erica Hall. Praying right now for Sister Crystal Davis. Praying right now for Ronnie McClendon. Praying right now for Dr. Sharon and Brother Derek Moore, Greg and Roxanne Martin, the Bennett family and the Rogers family, the Gaines family, the Bennettsville family, the Roseboro family, Sister Shante Ellis, Sister Eureka Young. Praying for Pops Ross Johnson and Sister Wendy Strong. Praying for David Fitzgerald Sr. Bishop Young and First Lady, Dr. Brenda Young and Bishop Kirkland, Dr. Dana Anderson Brown and Deborah Stringer. Yes. Praying right now for the Peacock family, Sister Pamela Gibbs, Pastor Haynes, and Pastor Ship. Praying right now for Victoria Green and Arlene Scott, and Paul Scott and James Reed, Sister Fania, Brother CJ. Charday Stanley and JR and Baby Kalani, praying for Cynthia Maxwell and Angel Maxwell, Tanisha Maxwell, Raheem and the Friends, praying for Mother Paulina Brooks, Brother Daryl May, 
from the Reginald Alexander, Mama Vera Harper, Mrs. Betty Sims, and Ms. Pamela Sims and Lola, Ajawan Lambert, praying for Taisha Harvey and family, Kiasha Macklin and Shalay Johnson and Carolyn Johnson Willis, and Al Johnson and Ken Stanberry, Raymond and Merced May. Praying for uh, Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Ali Frazier. Praying for Sister Willa Dasher, Andrew Ireland, Dr. Karen Ireland, Dr. Tamai Johnson, Sister Kanita Lewis, praying for you right now in the name of Jesus. Sister Heisha Lewis and Brother Melvin Lewis, Mother Alma Thomas, praying for her. Praying for Fred Cheek and Walker Posey Jr., Don Posey. Praying for the McCray family and Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, Sister Wanda Anderson and Brother Allen and Raven and Kia and Herb and Baby Jason, Dave Robinson and Willie Allen and Uncle Gus Briscoe and Veronica Hayes and Imani Hayes and Bootsy Briscoe and Eloise Tenor. And as we pray right now, I want you to begin to visualize because you got to see it before you see it. The 45 days in this year. Mm -hmm. I still believe God can make this the best year of your life. Yes, the Lord. I still believe God can do great and mighty things in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you need, but I don't believe that you have to wait till January 1st in order for stuff to begin shifting in your life. Yes. That's right. 45 days, I believe God can do it. Yes, yes. I believe God can turn your life upside down and right side up. Amen. 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 So let's pray tonight with that kind of thing. Amen. 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 If you feel like God is calling your name tonight and you want to join the city of David, if you would just type hashtag all in, you can join our church on tonight. Hashtag salvation. We'll reach out to you to pray the prayer of salvation. I believe in the power of God. Let us pray. Merciful God, we come before you on tonight to give you the glory and the honor and the praise, declaring, God, there is none like you. We give you glory on tonight, and we magnify you on tonight. We believe by faith, God, and thank you for manifesting yourself tonight in the word, God. Yes, we want to draw closer to you, God. And so we ask right now, God, that you would continue to create in all of us a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit, God. Anything that is not, uh, that is not of you, God, remove out of us, God. That nothing might dwell in you but you and your Holy Spirit, God. We pray right now, God, and believe by faith, God, that the steps of the righteous are ordered by you, God. And so keep us in the right alignment with your will and with your word, God. When we are straying away, God, be that good shepherd, God, and pull us back with the rod, God, that we might walk in the fullness, God, with our minds steadfast on you, God thinking on those things that are holy and righteous and those things that are pure. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for every family that we've called out on tonight, God. Even the silent petitions of our hearts, I place in your hands right now, God, believing that the, many of the afflicted, God, but you can deliver us from it all, God. And so we praise you on tonight, God. I see your mighty hand moving here at the city of David, God. And I praise you right now, and I give you glory right now, God. For the changed lives that we are seeing, God. It's all because of you, God. You deserve all the glory, God. You deserve all the honor, God. You deserve all the praise. Continue to do a new thing in our fellowship, God. Continue, God, to create and bake new bread, God. So that our worship does not become stale, God. That our praise does not become stale, God. And our fellowship does not become stale, God. Continue to open up the windows of heaven, God, and pour us out fresh manna, God. Pour us out a fresh anointing, God. Pour us out a fresh blessing, God. I believe there's blessings with the city name on it, God. There's blessings with my brother name on it, my sister name on it, God. And we're going to praise you until it manifests, God. We're going to give you glory until we see it, God. We're going to magnify your name, God, till it come to pass, God. There is no God like you, God. We were tired of the blow, God. And yet we're still declaring, God, you're worthy, God. You're worthy of every praise, God. From the rising of the sun, you're worthy, God. To the very going down of the scene, you're worthy, God. Move in this house, God. Lift up a bow down head in this house, God. Encourage those that might be discouraged, God. That help is on the way. We look toward the hill, realizing all of our help, God. It shall come from you and you alone. And
and nothing, God, will separate us from your love. We love you and adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Praise God. It's on tonight. Tonight, if you uh, feel the led of the Spirit to join us, just type hashtag all in. Be the 37th per new member of the city of David in 2022. And watch God do it in your life. Amen? amen. See you on Sunday as we come to worship God in spirit and in truth.